My name's Doug Bentley. I'm R&D Manager at Claris. We're here today at our Cheadle facility to talk to you about catalytic converters. So let's take a look at a typical unit. This is often an early model from a car from the early 1990s. You'll see it's quite a simple round or oval construction in this case and it lives underneath the, the gear stick in the passenger compartment. On later vehicles, you'll see that the catalyst has moved right up to the engine manifold. This is to aid light off time. Since 2001, when emission legislations got tighter, these had to get hotter quicker. So the catalyst unit's been bolted directly to the manifold. In terms of replacement, this can give you issues because you'll have to replace the whole unit. So let's talk about construction. This unit's off a Vauxhall Astra. You can see the whole product consists of the exhaust manifold, the integral catalyst, and the flange and connection. Let's talk about the details of the internals of the monolith. Monoliths can actually be made of metallic or ceramic structures. Inside they look the same. They've got a honeycomb structure where a precious metal loading made of either platinum, palladium or rhodium or a mixture of all three are there to reduce the emissions of the engine. So in terms of construction you can actually see that the metallic unit is either spiral wound or layered. This unit is spiral wound and you can see that there's a corrugated continuous sheet that's wrapped around and around itself. There's actually 400 cells per square inch, these channels that go through, and that's to allow the gas to pass through and be exposed to the precious metal loading for emissions reduction. Why metal? Well, metals are more durable, but they're much more expensive, and both original equipment manufacturers and most of the aftermarket now concentrate on ceramic. Here's a ceramic unit. They look much the same inside, the internal matrix is made of a corduit material and there are a number of pores, just like with metallic, to allow the gases to travel through. Additionally in ceramics, there's this interim matting to support the brick in place and hold it in situ within the outer casing. So let's talk about cause of failure. Well actually, aside from corrosion, these units should never fail. After all, there's no moving parts inside the catalytic converter, so they should last the lifetime of your vehicle. In practice though, Poor maintenance or external operating conditions can cause failure, and we'll talk about those now. Firstly, let's talk about thermal shock. These units are operating at between 3 and 400 degrees centigrade normally, so a sudden change in temperature, for example if you drove through a cold Ford, you'd see that they contract very quickly, this can lead to a crack. With time, the whole unit will disintegrate, and maybe by banging the unit externally, you'll find you'll hear this rattle. That's a very quick way to diagnose that problem. Next is meltdown. Typical operating temperature is increased, maybe through a poorly running engine. Temperatures up to 1,000 degrees can occur, and the front face just simply melts away. Finally, you'll see it from the outside, is impact damage. Driving over a speed bump, again, causes cracks inside, and the unit just breaks apart. All those modes of failure mean the unit has to be replaced. So what about the future? This is one of the most modern units. It's on a Euro 5, Ford Focus diesel engine. And you can see the unit is much larger because the emissions target it has to meet is much tighter. In the unit is a diesel oxidization catalyst at the front and at the back is a diesel particulate filter. We'll talk about DPFs in a separate video.